Hello and welcome back to the War of the Words podcast. I'm your host, Angel Cake. As we are embarking, getting closer and closer to the Challenge All-Stars 3 reveal, which I'm assuming is going to happen either this Wednesday or next Wednesday. Then we have so much challenge content with the War of the Worlds tournaments and spinoffs, and then the Challenge 38 happening later this year. I thought this was a golden opportunity to go over some challenge records and some challenge stats to see who's at the top spot and who's eyeing those top spots in certain records, whether they be good or bad. Uh, a few years ago, or a year, year and a half ago, I made videos going over some challenge records that were unbelievable and going over some prize money won. And when people come across those videos, the number one comment I get on those videos is, this needs to be updated. And so I thought, what better time than to set the record straight on a whole bunch of challenge records. Now I wanna give a huge, huge, huge shout out to David who hit me up on Instagram. He watched a previous episode of War of the Words podcast where it featured me, Chantel from Reality Realness with three S's and Chris from The Nullified Take. He watched our critique on EU's top 50 challenge players of all time. And we were talking about like going over some uh, stats and be able to mathematically and logically put together a top 50 challenge competitors list. And he reached out to me saying that he has an extensive and beautifully put together and color coordinated spreadsheet and that he sent me and it is immaculate. Uh, I just wanna give a huge, huge, huge shout out and appreciation to David for sending me his work on that spreadsheet because it is one, beautiful, and two, helped me a lot going over everybody's stats in one area. Now I did use a lot of David's spreadsheet for these records, but I also did some venturing out on my own through the challenge wiki page and coming up with other records that have been set by challengers and challenge competitors and trying to come up with if and when these records will be broken or who has the more likelihood of breaking these records. Um, now, David is just one person. I too am just one person doing extensive research over a series that is well over 500 episodes, over hundreds of cast members that have come in and out of the game. I want to say that please in the comment section, if there is a stat that is a little wonky or may be a little bit different than you may have recognized, please be courteous as we are only two people in terms of going through a show that has extended from 1998 to now and is ongoing. As well as I do want to mention and clarify that every record that I will be going over today is only from the main season of the challenge. It's not taking account any of the spinoffs, whether it is Champs vs. Pros, Champs vs. Stars, or All-Stars. All right, with all of that being said, let's jump into the first record, and we're going to start off with a few layups, trying to get our bearings here, and that is the most season appearances, and at number one spot, you guessed it, is going to be Johnny Bananas, with 20 seasons under his belt. CT is right behind him with 19 challenge seasons. Now, right off the bat, you're going to be looking at this going like, okay, well, CT could easily pass Johnny. However, he has mentioned that he will not be on the Challenge 38. Maybe he'll be back for Challenge 39. Maybe he'll take off another season and come back for 40. We don't know just yet. All we know is that he says he's not going to be back for the Challenge 38. But someone who is heavily implying that they will be back for Challenge 38 is Bananas. So Bananas is going to extend his lead on at least CT. And Anissa is in third place right now with 15 seasons. It's hard to think that Anissa isn't going to be coming back to the challenge. It just feels like she's always going to get an open invitation, especially being a part of the challenge official podcast. Then in fourth place, we have a tie with Wes and Cara Maria at 14 seasons. And then Leroy, who has since announced his retirement, uh, has 12 seasons in fifth place. We have Veronica and Nani at 11 seasons, tied for 11 seasons in sixth place. I, it's hard to think that Nani wouldn't be back for as many seasons as they asked her. So I think for sure 
Nani is going to be wiggling into the top five come the next challenge season. Now let's move on to the most final appearances in challenge history. The top two placing or the top two places in this specific record is not going to be shocking whatsoever. We have CT at the number one spot with 10 final appearances. Bananas and Cara Maria are in second place with nine apiece. I feel as though with Johnny coming back and after taking a couple of seasons off, maybe, just maybe, maybe he can mitigate his risk level and even get to another finals. It would be rather shocking if he did that because... Leaving anybody with that many wins is mind-boggling to me to think that anybody would just be like, oh yeah, this guy has seven wins, he's been to nine finals, yeah, we'll just let him go to the finals. I say that, but also, that's what they did with CT last season. He didn't go into a single elimination, and everybody was just cool with him getting to the finals and then winning. So... I'm not going to put anything past players and we got to see what the cast will look like for the challenge 38, but it, it wouldn't surprise me if bananas were to make it very deep within challenge 38 and possibly make it to another finals. Then in fourth place, we have a about a four way tie with Derek K, Paula, Wes, Leroy and Sarah Rice, five way tie with five final appearances apiece. And then we have a plethora of players with four final appearances with Darrell, Jordan, Zach, Brad, Laurel, Mark, Long, Veronica, Evelyn, Abram, Susie, Corey, Coral, Camilla, Miz, and Jen G, all with four final appearances each. I, it's hard to think that there are players that are going to be vying for this final appearances record. I mean, some of these players aren't even going to be back on the challenge anytime soon or have since retired. I think the only person that is still really charging up is Corey. Corey Wharton is still playing. He's not going to be on challenge 38, but he still has the ability to be on the challenge for way more seasons and possibly make it to four, five, six, seven finals. Jordan could always come back, uh, but he said he wasn't going to ever be back on the main season if Tori was going to be on there. I mean, we have Casey at three finals, but other than that, I really can't think of anybody that is playing right now that could be making it further. We also have Kyle. Kyle Christie that has three final appearances that he could be making his way uh, onto this list. I just don't know if they're going to be vying for the top spot, making it to 10 final appearances, but you never know. I mean, it took CT 19 seasons to make it to 10 finals, Bananas 20 seasons to make it to nine finals. And since we're here, let's just talk about the most championships in the challenge history. At the number one spot, of course, is Bananas with seven challenge championships we have ct in second place with five now after winning back-to-back -back challenge seasons winning i want to say three out of the last four seasons with 34 36 and 37 uh, so he has five now just surpassed Darrell, and Darrell now is in third place with four and with three championships apiece we have a tie between Derek k landon evelyn veronica jordan Jamie Murray and Kenny and then there is a ton of players tied in that fifth slot with two championships apiece and that is Cara Maria, Mark Long, Paula, Abram, Wes, Theo Vaughn, Susie, Sarah Rice, Jody, Dan Seltzer, Rachel Robinson, Miz, Eric, Ashley Mitchell, Holly, Tori Hall, Ronnie, Tyler Duckworth, Sean, Evan, and Camilla. Looking at Durrell's record of four challenge championships and how that has stood the test of time. I mean, Durrell hasn't been to a finals, taking away all-stars, like I was saying. Just looking at the main series of the challenge, Durrell hasn't been to a finals since Fresh Meat, season 12. He won four straight, and that stood the test of time's for a while until Bananas eclipsed that. I want to say in Free Agents, he got to his fifth challenge win. It took from Fresh Meat all the way to Free Agents for somebody just to pass Darrell to get to that first spot. And then it took CT on the challenge 36 
to tie with Darrell and then Challenge 37 to just surpass Darrell. And taking a look at the other players that are on the fourth and fifth slots, there's not too many that I feel are really pushing their way to get up the rankings to possibly surpass Darrell again. I just don't see anybody. Most of the players, like I mentioned, are either not readily returning to the main seasons, have announced their retirement, or they're waiting to get that call from All-Stars, saying maybe if Casey can win another Challenge Championships or get another Challenge Championships uh, in the next coming season, then she will be tied for for fifth spot. I also, in saying that, if Jenny ever comes back to the challenge, which I kind of hope so, I mean, she could easily get another championship. I mean, she beat Casey outright. Casey kind of got a little, a little help. And I, when I say little, I put that in quotes. She got some help uh, getting that f- challenge championship last season. So I think Jenny could win outright against anybody. So if Jenny could come back, I think she could win another challenge season getting into this into this bracket at the number five and then even surpassing if she can come back to do more seasons. But if she's not coming back to do any more seasons, then I don't see any of these records being broken anytime soon. Another one that I don't have a graphic for because there's a lot of names that are tied and I only have three placements because, I mean, there's not a whole lot going on here, but it's the most consecutive challenge wins and that's how many wins this player did in a row according to their appearances. Um, So we have Darrell, who was on season 7, 8, not 9, 10, not 11, and 12. He won those four seasons. So he's up at the top with four challenge championships in a row. And I don't think anybody will surpass him. I think Jordan had a great shot of surpassing him, but then was taken out in total madness by Fessy. And I just don't think anybody else will ever come close, will ever come close. I mean, I guess CT could do it if he comes back for the Challenge 39 or Challenge 40 and makes it all the way and wins, and then he would have another shot of possibly going on to winning four in a row. So right now we have in second spot with three wins in a row, is Derek Kay, Jordan, and Jamie Murray. And tied for third place with back-to-back wins, um, we have CT, who is currently the current record holder right now. We have Bananas, who has done it twice in his challenge career. Landon, Veronica, Kenny, Evan, Sarah Rice, Jody, Mark Long, Theo Vaughn, Eric, Sean Duffy, Tyler, and Ronnie. But this is one of the hardest records, I think. And I think Darrell is going to hold this record for a long time. I don't think anybody will surpass four. I will put money on it that I don't think anybody will surpass four challenge championship wins in a row ever to make it to five in a row. I just don't. First of all, I don't see much of anybody winning five challenge championships at this point, let alone doing it five in a row. I just don't see it. But if it happens, that'll be rather, rather impressive. All right, let's go on to a record. Sticking with the winning theme here, uh, a record or records that I personally find very interesting. And I had to do this uh, very calculated, uh, both figuratively and literally. And it is conducting the youngest to win the challenge at the time of winning. And the way I did this is that I found an age calculator where I put everybody's birthday in, and then I put the date of when they were crowned champions. So whenever the episode aired out to the general public where TJ handed over a check or was giving them something, announced them as the winners. So whenever that episode aired and whatever age that person was when that episode aired, stating that they were champions, that's the that's what I took as their age. So let's take a first look at the youngest players to ever win the challenge. We have at the number one spot, we have... Evelyn, who was 20 years old, five months and seven days old. And that was when Evelyn won Inferno 3. That was her second season. Uh, It's pretty interesting because in Fresh Meat season 12, Evelyn came on to the show when she was 18. And the same with Casey, Casey Cooper. They were both 18. 
that I think will never happen ever again. I don't think there will ever be an 18 year old that will come on to do the challenge. If anything, the challenge skews older a little bit more these days. The rookies, besides Emmy, this past uh, challenge season, um, majority of the rookies are like either established in certain fields or areas. And so they are either mid to late 20s are the rookies now. And then you have the vets who are well older into their 30s and even into their 40s when you're taking a look into CT and bananas. What I'm trying to say is I think that the youngest players to win the challenge, I don't think these records will ever, ever be broken because I think no matter what, we're always going to have 21 years and older on the casting of the challenge. So let's take a look at who holds the number two spot, and that is Rachel Robinson, who was 20 years old, 11 months and nine days, and that was when Rachel won the gauntlet season seven. At the number three spot, we have Yes, who was 21 years old, zero months and 11 days old when he won the Challenge 2000, that was season three, and then season two, Ronnie uh, won with her team when she was 21 years old, zero months and 22 days old, and then Sarah, when Road Rules won the gauntlet in season seven, she was 21 years old, one month and 16 days. And I have here on um, an honorable mention on my laptop, we have Tori Hall, who won in gauntlet three. She was 21 years old, three months and six days old. Now I did a little bit something different with the oldest to ever win the challenge at the time of winning. The thing is, is that with CT and Bananas winning so much later on in their challenge careers, they instantly take up the first six slots. So I actually have the top 22 on the oldest to ever win the challenge just to get a variety. So as I mentioned, CT takes up the first three slots. CT winning uh, the most recent season, Challenge 37, he was about 41 years old, four months and 30 days old. In the second slot is CT winning Double Agents where he was 40 years old, nine months and five days. And then in the third slot is CT again. And this was him winning War of the Worlds 2 at 39 years old, four months and 26 days. Just sliding into the top five is Bananas at number four, winning Total Madness at 38 years old and 23 days. CT reclaims into the fifth spot, winning in Invasion of the Champions at 36 years old, nine months and 24 days. And then Bananas takes the sixth slot where he won Rivals 3 at 34 years old, one month and 12 days. This is where we're kind of like now moving moving and grooving with some new names here on the list. And at number seven, we have Casey Clark winning last season, Challenge 37, at 33 years old, 11 months and 20 days. Then in the eighth spot is Jenny winning at 33 years old, eight months and 28 days when she won Total Madness. Then you have Eric, who is in ninth spot, winning at the age of 33 years old, eight months and eight days when he won Battle of the Sexes 2. That is season nine, everybody. At the 10th spot is Amber B., who won at 33 years old, three months and eight days in double agents. And number 11, we have yet again CT winning in Rivals 2 at 33 years old, two months and nine days. Paula at 12, won in Rivals 2 at 32 years old, two months and 18 days. Number 13 is Bananas winning in Free Agents at 32 years old. Mark Long at 14, winning Battle of the Sexes. That's season six at 31 years old, 11 months and 10 days. At 15, we have Cara Maria winning in Vendettas at 31, 11, and five days. Yeah, I think I'm going to stop there, but I the up until number 22, which was Susie, who won in The Ruins, and she was 30 years old, three months and 30 days. All right, I'm going to hold off on the most prize money one as I want to go into some of the dailies and elimination records. Let's go into the most daily wins in challenge history. At the number one spot, I think it's quite simple to say that it's because of how many seasons he's been on and how many challenges he's done. But number one spot is Bananas at 62 daily wins. Number two spot is CT at 55 daily wins. Abram at 49 daily wins. Now, Abram hasn't been on the challenge 
since season 27. A full 10 seasons has passed, and nobody has been able to get past Abram. Um, Veronica is at 47, and in the fifth spot is Derek K at 43. Kerr Maria and Brad both have 41 daily wins just outside of the top five. And then we have the most daily losses in challenge history. At the number one spot, we have Anissa with 115 daily losses. Then again, we have CT at 110 daily losses. Bananas just under triple digits at 92 daily losses. Then you have Nani with 86 and Wes with 82. And again, Cara Maria has 80 daily losses just outside of the top five. And I will say that I think it's mainly due to how many challenge seasons they have been on and how many you can't win every single daily. So I think that this could be a little bit more skewed in the way of you're just playing the game. You're not going to be able to win every single challenge. You're not you can't even win like a third of every single daily that is on a season. So it's going to be very difficult. Right. So I think it is just uh, a way of how many seasons somebody has been on and then just the way it, it goes like that. Uh, let's go into the most daily wins in a single season. So this is via one season, how many dailies they won. Uh, majority of who is on this list is because of teams. So I have players slash teams at the number one spot. We have the real world team in season four, the extreme challenge. Tied with the guys team in Season 9, Battle of the Sexes 2, with 12 daily wins. That is a lot of wins, especially when you're taking a look at past seasons and they only have like, I don't know, 12 to 15 episodes. And one of those are the finals. So, I mean, just absolute domination by those teams. Then you have... In the second spot, Road Rules team from the Inferno, Vets team in Gauntlet 3, and Team USA in Season 34, War of the Worlds 2 with 11 daily wins. And then you have the Guys team on Season 6, Battle of the Sexes, and Jordan from Season 34 with 10 wins apiece. Now, I have Jordan up here from War of the Worlds 2 because that was a very different season, right? Because you could turn coat. So Jordan, who was on... The Team USA for a good portion of that season changed over to the UK and then UK started winning some. So I had to take how many US daily wins he won. And then when he swapped over to the UK, I had to count the UK uh, daily wins as well. So it was a little weird like that. The same thing I had to do with Tori, who came in fourth place alongside the Badasses team of Inferno 3 and the Rookies team in Gauntlet 2. Um... They all three had nine daily wins. And then in the fifth spot, you have the Road Rules team in Season 7, Good Guys team in Season 10, Champs team in the Ruins, and then Corey from Bloodlines with eight daily wins. I just don't think that we're going to ever see tw anybody top 12, 10, 11 anytime soon, unless we're getting another team-based challenge, which I just don't see them doing anytime soon or I don't want them to do anytime soon. Let's go on to elimination records. First, we're going to be talking about the most eliminations in challenge history. Up at the top, Bananas and West sharing the top spot with 23 eliminations they have faced in their challenge career. Anissa is in the second spot with 21 eliminations faced in her challenge career and I can only expect that number to go up. If anybody's gonna break this record, it's gonna be Anissa. Uh, Carmaria is in third spot with 18 eliminations faced. Derek Kay and Leroy are tied in fourth spot with 14. Then Nani and Camilla are in the fifth spot with 13. And honorable mention, we have Corey Wharton and Nelson both haven't been in 12 eliminations. Corey Wharton and Nelson, I just feel like they're always going to be thrown into elimination at least once in every single season. So I can see them making their way into the top spot in the next coming seasons or so. All right, let's go into who has the most elimination wins. At the number one spot, we have Wes with 14. Car Maria at 12. Anissa is in the third spot with 10. And then underneath... 10 with 9, we have a tie between Bananas, Leroy, Laurel, Camilla, Nelson, and Derek K. And then in the fifth spot, Corey Wharton is holding strong with 8. But right behind him is Cam and Jordan, 
both having seven elimination wins. Again, Jordan could come back onto the main season of the challenge, maybe jump in front of Corey or tie him. Uh, I just don't know when that would be, but if anything, I think Corey has the better shot of jumping into a tie to get nine and possibly surpassing them to get into a, a tie for third place with 10. So I think Corey has a great shot of climbing his way up the ladder. Uh, the same with Nelson. Nelson is always being thrown into elimination and he does a really great job in eliminations majority of the time. So I do think that Nelson could find his way just climbing up this ladder and even surpassing Kara in the next like two or three seasons. Let's go into the most consecutive elimination wins in challenge history. This is just me counting the streak across challenge seasons for these players to see how many eliminations they won in a row. Uh, so let's go into Laurel who's at the top spot with nine eliminations in a row. She has dropped her last two. Uh, that was in Invasion of the Champions and then in War of the Worlds 2, but she has nine, which is very, very, very strong. You have Wes at eight. Before he lost to Kahuta, he was on a major streak at the beginning of his challenge season. Then you have Brad, who fumbled a good portion of his, of his eliminations at the beginning of his challenge career, and then he put on a streak to get six in a row. And then he kind of stopped there. And then we have uh, in the fourth spot, we have Bananas, Cara Maria, Nelson, Corey, Alton, Emily Scrum, Casey Cooper, and Sarah Grayson. They're all tied with five elimination streaks, uh, wins. And then you have in the last spot, in the top five spot, we have a tie between Derek K, Leroy, Jordan, Susie, and Evan at four. We do have some current streaks ongoing like Casey who hasn't lost an elimination in her challenge career just yet the same with Fessy um so they're on their road walking towards possibly making it into the top five the next record that I have and that is the most consecutive eliminations avoided in challenge history now I want you all to to hear me out about this category right I had the most difficult time putting this category together because um, my thought process was I wanted to only take when they were eligible to go into the elimination. So if it was, if I'm talking about Darrell, I only counted if he was on a season that specified if it was a men's day or a women's day, I never counted the women's days because he was gonna avoid those eliminations anyways. Darrell has avoided 33 eliminations that he was eligible for, and then Rachel Robinson was able to get past 31 possible eliminations that she was gonna be sent into. Uh, she did not get sent into any eliminations until Battle of the Exes. She was voted out, of the seasons that she was able to be voted out of. She didn't see a single elimination in the duel. Also, I did not count any of the seasons that were just vote outs because those weren't eliminations. Mark Long was next, where he didn't see a single elimination up until the very last elimination of X's in season 22. And so he has been able to avoid 25 eliminations in a row. CT avoided 22. And in the fifth spot, we have Car Maria and Kenny both having avoided 21 total eliminations in a row. I think Kara almost did it twice in her challenge career of avoiding 21 eliminations. CT is riding a streak right now uh, after not going into a single elimination in 37 and half of uh, 36. These streaks just kind of constantly get restarted every so often. So... This one was a little bit more difficult. I couldn't go through every single player and every single elimination and everything. So if you know of this record and someone who could possibly be in the top five, this is what I could find and put together. I mean, 33 eliminations, that's like over four seasons. The same thing with Rachel Robinson, the same thing with Kenny. I mean, that is seasons upon seasons of just missing eliminations one after another. And it's Rather, rather impressive. All right, we're at the final record that I have written down, and that is the record of the most prize money won on the challenge to date as of April 11th, 2022. 
So at this point, at the number one spot, we have CT with $1,365,000 won on the challenge. In the second spot, we have Bananas winning $1.184720. That's $1,184,720. Then in the third spot, we have Ashley Millionaire Mitchell with $1,121,250. And then underneath the million dollar trio, we have Jordan in the fourth spot with $833,000. Turbo winning $750,000. And then at the sixth spot, we have Cara Maria at $602,250. Camilla in the seventh spot with $561,250. Jenny, Jenny West winning $500,000. Amber B with $450,000. And in the 10th spot, we have Casey winning Challenge 37 with $403,000. And Wes, just coming in underneath the top 10 in the 11th spot with $303,000. And the one thing that I can say about this record and the prize money, now that everything is a million dollars, 400,000, 450, 500,000 now handed out to the winners. We're going to be seeing a lot more of these challenge staples and names kind of being lowered and lowered in this cast list. I mean, I think I read somewhere that Darrell is number 14 or 15, and that is because, yes, he has a lot of challenge wins, but a lot of his wins we're back in the day when the prize money wasn't that much and you're splitting it out between like four to five to six competitors or teammates that you have. So now with the money being a million dollars every single season, being able to get 500,000, 450,000, uh, 400,000 uh, in the blink of an eye and it's normally one to two people now winning on their own. I mean, Casey, last season, just surpassed so many big names in challenge history. I mean, she just passed Wes with a blink of an eye. Same thing with Amber B and Jenny. I mean, those three players were 37, 36, and 35 winners. And then you have CT and Bananas at the very tippy top, uh, just surpassing Ashley Mitchell. I mean, Ashley... After taking the whole $1 million for herself in Final Reckoning, I mean, she surpassed all of them. She surpassed every, she surpassed CT and Bananas who had, like, more championships than her at that point. But it took them so long to just edge out. I mean, Bananas, with just winning Total Madness to get that $500,000 check, I mean, he just surpassed Ashley <laughs> with 60,000 just barely passed her after uh and he has seven wins to her too I think that record is the one that gets me the most is that you're gonna see this prize money just overtake a lot of staples and challenge names that have built the show and got it to where it is at a point where it can now start handing out one million dollars like legit prize money not like ten thousand dollars to college kids now they're trying to hand out one million dollars to adults let's just throw this out here jenny does come back let's just say jenny does come back and wins another season she's instantly either jumps up from the eighth spot to the fourth spot passing jordan or if she's going to take the whole five hundred thousand dollars then she's in well again she's in the fourth spot but she hits that one million dollars with just two wins i mean yeah it's rather incredible i think a lot more of the records are going to impress me more than that prize money it's just seeing like names of like super huge challengers and competitors that have given like years and blood sweat and tears to the game and then just seeing them like fall off if only the prize money was uh, bigger back then. Maybe we would see Darrell, who is a four-time challenge champ, be able to be up at the top echelons of that prize money. But he's probably getting a good amount of money 
just making an appearance on the Challenge All-Stars, which is going to be coming out soon. But that is it for the challenge records and where everything stands at the moment. Uh, what do you think about this video? Which record impresses you the most? Which out of all the records that I said and mentioned today do you think is easily passable, will never be surpassed, and which one impresses you the most? Let me know that down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. And I want to give a special shout out to everybody who supports me over at patreon.com slash angelcakevids. Thank you so much for your support and generosity. I really, really appreciate it. And thank you so much for watching this podcast in its entirety up to this point. Thank you so much. While you're down there, hit that like and subscribe button. I'll be back really, really soon with more challenge content, more content in general. But until then, peace.